Welcome to Industry TV Network. Hit the like button, share, and subscribe. In this video, we'll be touching on the life and times of Irene Cara Escalera. Irene Cara Escalera was born March, March 18, 1959. She was an American singer and actress. Cara rose to prominence in 1980 for her role as Coco Hernandez in the 1980 musical film Fame and for recording the film's title song Fame, which reached number one in several countries. In 1983, Cara sang and co wrote the song Flashdance, What a Feeling, from the film Flashdance for which she shared an Academy Award for Best Original Song and won a Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance in 1984. Prior to her success with fame, Cara portrayed the title character Sparkle Williams in the original 1976 musical drama film Sparkle. Irene was born in the Bronx, New York City, the youngest of five children. Her father, Gaspard Cara, a steel factory worker and retired saxophonist, was Puerto Rican, and her mother, Luis Escalera, a movie theater usher, was Cuban. Cara had two sisters and two brothers. At the age of three, she was one of five finalists for the Little Miss America pageant. She began to play the piano by ear, studied music, acting and dance seriously, and began taking dance lessons when she was five. Her performing career started with her singing and dancing professionally on Spanish language television. She made early TV appearances on the original Amateur Hour, Singing in Spanish, and Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show. In 1971, through 1972, she was a regular on PBS's education, educational program, The Electric Company, as a member of the show's band, The Short Circus. As a child, Cara recorded a Spanish language record for the Latin market and an, and an English language Christmas album. She also appeared in a major concert tribute to Duke Ellington, which featured Stevie Wonder, Sammy Davis Jr. and Roberta Flack. Cara attended the Professional Children's School in Manhattan. She appeared in on and off Broadway theatrical shows, including the musicals Ain't Misbehaving, The Me Nobody Knows, which won an Obie Award, Maggie Flynn opposite Shirley Jones and Jack Cassidy, and Via Galactica with Raul Julia. Cara was the original Daisy Allen on the 1970s daytime serial drama, Love of Life. She later took on the role of Angela in the romance slash thriller, Aaron Loves Angela, followed by her portrayal of the title character in Sparkle. Television brought Cara international acclaim for serious dramatic roles in two outstanding miniseries, Roots, The Next Generations, and Guyana Tragedy, the story of Jim Jones. John Willis's Screen World, Volume 28, named her one of 12 promising new actors of 1976. That same year, a reader's poll in Write On magazine named her top actress. The 1980 hit film Fame, Fame directed by Alan Parker, catapulted Cara to stardom. She was originally originally cast as a dancer, but when producers David DeSilva and Alan Marshall and screenwriter Christopher Gore heard her voice, they rewrote the role of Coco Hernandez for her to play. In this part, she sang both the title song Fame and the film's other single, Out Here On My Own, which were both nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Song. These songs helped make the film's soundtrack a chart-topping, multi-platinum album. Further history was made at the Academy Awards that year. It was the first song time that two songs from the same film and sung by the same artist were nominated in the same category. Thus, Cara had the opportunity to be one of the few singers to perform more than one song at the Oscar ceremony. Fame, written by Michael Gore and Dean Pitchford, 
won the award for Best Original Song that year, and the film won the Academy Award for Best Original Score. Cara earned Grammy Award nominations in 1980 for Best New Artist and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance, as well as a Golden Globe nomination for Best Motion Picture Actress in a Musical. Billboard named her top new single artist, while Cashbox Magazine awarded her both Most Promising Female Vocalist and Top Female Vocalist. Asked by Fame TV series producers to reprise her role as Coco Hernandez, she declined, wanting to focus her attention on her recording career. Erica Gimple assumed the role. In 1982, Cara earned the Image Award for Best Actress when she co-starred with Diane Carroll and Rosalind Cash in the NBC movie of the week, Maya Angelou's Sister Sister. Cara portrayed Merrily Evers Williams in the PBS TV movie about civil rights leader Mecca Evers, For Us the Living, the Mega Evers Story, and earned an NAACP Award Best Actress nomination. She also appeared in 1982's Killing Them Softly. Cara continued to perform in live theater. In 1980, she briefly played the role of Dorothy in The Wiz on tour, in a role that Stephanie Mills had first portrayed in the original Broadway production. Coincidentally, Cara and Mills had shared the stage together as children in the original 1968 Broadway musical Maggie Flynn, starring Shirley Jones and Jack Cassidy, in which both young girls played American Civil War orphans. In 1983, Cara peaked, reached the peak of her music career with the title song for the movie Flashdance. Flashdance, What a Feeling, which she, which she co-wrote with Giorgio Marauder and Keith Forsey. Cara penned the lyrics to the song with Keith Forsey while riding in a car in New York headed to the studio to record it. Marauder composed the music. Cara admitted later that she was initially reluctant to work with Giorgio Marauder because she had no wish to invite further comparisons with another artist who worked with Marauder, Donna Summer. Irene Cara's voice did kind of remind me of Donna Summer's though. Despite this, the collaboration paid off and became a hit in several countries, attracting several awards for Cara. She shared the 1983 Academy Award for Best Original Song with Marotta and Forsey and won the 1984 Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance, 1984 Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song, and American Music Award for Best R&B Female Artist and Best Pop Single of the Year. She was the first Hispanic black woman to win an Oscar in a category other than an acting category, as well as the second to be nominated outside an acting category. Flashdance was re-recorded by Cara twice. In 1997, as a track in the original soundtrack for the British film The Full Monty, the second time in 2002 as a duet with Swiss artist DJ Bobo. In 1984, she was in the comedic thriller City Heat, co-starring with Clint Eastwood and Burt Reynolds and singing the standards Embraceable You and Get Happy. She also co-wrote the theme song City Heat, which was sung by the jazz vocalist Joe Williams. In May of that year, she scored her final top 40 hit with Breakdance, going to number 8. The follow-up You Were Made For Me reached number 78 that summer but she did not appear on the Hot 100 again. In 1985, Cara co-starred with Tatum O'Neill in Certain Fury about two troubled young women who flee a court hearing and are mistaken for killers. In 1986, Cara appeared in the film Busted Up. She also provided the voice of Snow White in the unofficial sequel to Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Filmations Happily Ever After in 1993. That same year, she appeared as Mary Magdalene in a tour of Jesus Christ Superstar opposite Ted Neely, Carl Anderson, and Dennis D. Young. In 
1985, she sued Al Corey Incorporated and Network Reek Records for withholding her royalties from the Flash Dance soundtrack. While she was banned from the music industry after the lawsuit, Cara didn't stop fighting. She eventually won $1.5 million against her label. However, the label filed bankruptcy. Irene Cara endured a series of career setbacks due to personal and professional obstacles throughout the 1980s. The culmination of these issues led to her fleeing the spotlight while feeling completely disenchanted with the entertainment industry, music in particular. Some of these problems and missteps include the lawsuit. The biggest setback for Kara was the lawsuit against her record label Network Records and her management team Al Corey Incorporated. She sued them for $10 million in unpaid royalties on her hit songs. It took years to reach a settlement and during that time she spent all of the little money she had on lawyer fees leaving her broke. The suit slowed her music career to a halt since she wasn't recording any new material. Though she ultimately won that $1.5 million from the lawsuit, she may have lost more than she gained from overall opportunity cost. Kara has claimed in interviews that she was blacklisted in the music industry. The word around town was that she was difficult to work with, so nobody wanted to hire or collaborate with her. She claims this was related to the lawsuit. People often forget that Irene Cara not only performed two of the key songs in, sound, in the soundtrack of the movie Fame, but she also played Coco Hernandez in the movie, and she was really good. So good that she earned a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress, which she lost to Sissy Spacek. But she also starred in over a dozen other roles after the performance. She never found the same level of success and progressively took smaller and smaller roles and eventually only got work as a voice actor. Her acting career faltered and she also didn't get any juicy soundtrack songs, which which leads to Carol Carol failing to leverage her success on movie soundtracks into her own personal songs and albums. Her main studio albums, 1982's Anyone Can See and 1983's What a Feeling, didn't give fans much of what they wanted. So despite having massive commercial success for soundtrack songs, Flashdance, Fame, and Out Here On My Own, they didn't translate commercial success for her two studio album projects. Her third album, Charismatic, was shelved by Electra Records. When it was finally released, it was a critical and commercial failure. And it arrived years after it, after her peak time, so it already faced an uphill battle. She downplays this, but she was a known cocaine user, possibly connected to the stress of her case. She also divorced her husband. Down spiral and her failed attempt at marriage, Irene temporarily resorted to the use of cocaine. You know, certainly didn't have needles in my arm, or no, nor did I smoke anything, okay? But the fact that so much of the rumors emanate from people who are putting it in your face, you know, constantly, and who are in a position of power and who should know better. This was a dark and painful time for the young singer actress. Got to a point when, uh, when it was ruining my health and I just and I hated it I hated doing it and couldn't stop you know without something without some kind of uh, uh, help you know to get it out get it out of get the the uh, the, lo- the longing for it out you know out of my system the before mentioned points did not completely ruin her career after her personal and professional downfall in Hollywood She started recording and performing overseas and found some success. She also did some stage work. Still, it's hard not to wonder what could have been if she had better luck. Irene stated the following about the soundtrack of Flashdance and Network Records. After that album, I sued my label. First of all, my label had fallen apart by itself 
it lost its distribution. And I was stuck with a label president who continued to not pay me and continued to use me for distribution for his small label. All the other artists that had been on RSO Records went elsewhere. When that dissolved, the Bee Gees left and Yvonne Elliman left, and I, not having good management or a good lawyer, thought I was obligated to this record president who signed me from a movie, Fame, and I'd had enough. I had two of the biggest hits of the decade, and I was not seeing a dime. So I sued him, and it took eight years, and cost me my future as a recording artist, because no other label would sign me. RSO was sending out threatening letters to the other labels, and the one label that did sign me said they would stand by me through the lawsuit. But once I finished my album, Charismatic, in 1987, they shelved it and didn't promote it. Irene Cara passed away in her Florida home on November 26, 2022. The cause of death was unknown, but we will forever remember Irene Cara as Coco Fernandez and as the great lead singer of the great hits she gave us. Rest in peace, Irene Cara.